Acts chapter 21. And when it was that we were parted from them and had set sail, we came with a straight course to Kors, and the next day to Rhodos, and from thence to Patara. And having found a ship crossing over to Poinikia, we went abroad. We went aboard and set sail. And when we had come in sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left hand, we were sailing to Aram and landed at Thor, for there the ship was to unlaid her cargo. And having found the disciples, we tarried there seven days. And these said to Paulos through the Spirit, not to be embarking to Jerusalem. And when it was that we had accomplished the days, we departed and went on our journey, they all with women and children, bringing us forward till we were out of the city, and having placed the knees upon the beach, having prayed, we hugged each other goodbye. And we went on board the ship, but they returned home again. And when they had finished the voyage from Thor, we arrived at Ptolemaios. And having embraced the brothers, we abode with them one day. And on the morrow we departed and came to Caesarea. And entering into the house of Philippos, the announcer of the announcement, who was one of the seven, we abode with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who were prophesying. And as we tarried there some days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And coming to us and taking Paulos's belt, he bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus saith the Holy Spirit, So shall the Yehudim at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this belt, and shall deliver him into the hands of the nations. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paulos answered, What do ye, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem, for the name of the Lord Yeshua. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after these days we took up our baggage and went up to Jerusalem. And there went with us also certain of the disciples from Caesarea, bringing with them one Manasson of Cypros, an early disciple with whom we should lodge. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. And the day following, Paulos went in with us to Jacob, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he rehearsed one by one the things which the God had wrought among the nations through his serving. And they, when they heard it, glorified the God, and they said to him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands there are among the Yehudim of them that have believed, and they are all zealous for the law. And they, having been informed concerning thee, that thou teachest all the Yehudim who are among the nations to forsake more share, telling them not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after their customs. What is it therefore? They will certainly hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men that, are, that have a vow on them. These take and purify thyself with them, and be at charges for them. That means pay for them. That they may shave their heads, and all shall know that there is no truth in the things whereof they have been informed concerning thee but that thou thyself also walkest orderly, keeping the law. And you see, this is what, what Paulos does to dispel all these false rumors. He was not telling people to forsake Moses. That was a lie. That was slander. But as touching those of the nations that have believed, 
we wrote, giving judgment that they should keep themselves from things sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what is strangled, and from sexual sin. Now, the Roman text changed this to make it as though this was all that was required of the, of the nations. That was not the intent, but it was important that the nations knew these things which were particularly troublesome to their unity with the, the Yehudim who had believed. It's imp it was important that they learn these immediately, whereas other things they could learn to practice as they learnt of them from the law, because the law was being read every synagogue in the Sabbaths. Then Baulos took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, went into the temple, declaring the fulfillment of the days of purification, until the offering was offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost completed, the Yehudim from Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the multitude and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Yisrael, help! This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place. And moreover, he brought Greeks also into the temple and hath defiled this holy place. For they had before seen with him in the city Trophimos, the Ephesian, at whom they supposed that Paulos had brought into the temple, and all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they laid hold on Paulos and dragged him out of the temple, and straightway the doors were shut, and as they were seeking to kill him, tidings came up to the chief captain of the cohort that all Yerushalem was in confusion or uproar, and forthwith he took soldiers and centurions and ran down upon them. That's the Romans. And they, when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paulos. Then the chief captain came near and laid hold on him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and inquired who he was and what he had done. And some shouted one thing some another among the crowd and when he could not know the certainty for the uproar he commanded him to be brought into the castle and when he came upon the stairs so it was that he was born carried of the soldiers for the violence of the crowd for the multitude of the people followed after crying out away with him and as Paulos was about to be brought into the castle he saith to the chief captain, May I say something to thee? And he said, Dost thou know Greek? Art thou not then the Mithri who before these days stirred up a sedition, stirred up to sedition, and led out into the wilderness the four thousand men of the assassins, the assassins? But Paulos said, I am a Yehudim of Tarsos in Kilikia, a citizen of of no insignificant city, and I beseech thee, give me leave to speak to the people. And when he had given him leave, Baulos, standing on the stairs, beckoned with the hand to the people. And when there was, when there was made a great silence, he spake to them in the Hebrew language, saying, 